Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw, Editorial Director at TigerFitness.com and Muscle and Brawn Nutrition CEO. Guys, it's Q&A Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. Got about eight questions today. Before I get into these questions, if you have a question for the big, hairy, ugly dude, check out my Q&A link below. Come on over, post your questions in that Q&A link. I answer every question posted. The best questions I turn into a Q&A video every Sunday just like this. So, let's get into the questions, guys. The first question today is from Pamela. Pamela has a question about people with long limbs and a short torso. He says, I have pretty long limbs, so whenever I bench press, the weight feels pretty heavy, even though I only use 55 kilograms for about three sets of nine. I started with a grip where it was, out, let's see, about an inch out within the rings. So his grip was about an inch within the rings. He says, I feel somewhat strong at this grip width, but when I go too wide, my index finger on the ring, it feels less comfortable on the shoulders, etc. All right, so I got some advice for Pamela. If you are feeling strain on your shoulders during the bench press, it is likely for a number of reasons. And let me break down the bench press here. We got a very tall guy, long limbs, who's trying to bench. He's an inch within the ring. For him, this is going to be more like a close grip bench press. Now the issue, Pamela, is that when you have long limbs and you're trying to do a close grip bench press, if you're bringing that down to your chest, you're really driving your elbows way far back and you're going to put a lot of strain on your shoulders. So that is not the best position for you to bench in. That is a close grip bench press for you. Now, you said that you feel pretty strong from, from that position. That's fair enough. You said when you bring the, you, your grip width out, you feel strain on your shoulders. Likely, likely, and I haven't seen your video, likely though, you're benching more like this with your arms flared, with your arms flared. You're benching like this. If you try to bring your, the bar down your chest in this position, you're going to str strain your shoulders. You need to drop that elbow position and try to bench right below your nipples like this. I would recommend that you put this finger on the ring, on the ring right here. You want to start with a semi or even your middle finger up. In fact, put your middle finger on the ring and then instead of benching like this, try to bench it down here, right below your nipples at nipple level or below. That is going to help place less strain on your shoulders. When you bench how you are an inch inside of the ring, that is tricep centric and that over time is going to place more strain on your shoulders. So it feels okay now, but it's going to start to beat up your shoulders because you're driving that elbow so far back. So the closer your bench press grip width, the closer your bench press grip width, can I say that without stumbling, the more strain you're going to see on your shoulders because the harder it is to get to your chest, you have to really drive those elbows back. So if you, if you widen your grip, you see those elbows come a little bit forward. Your issue with wide grip benching, Pamela, is likely not the wide grip benching. It's probably that you don't have your elbows tucked enough when you're benching. So I hope that helps some. Next question is from Ray-Ban. Rayban says, hey, big fan of every single video of yours. Thank you, Rayban. I've been at the gym for 2.6 years, and I've started watching my diet for the past six months. He's 5'7", 68.5 kilograms, and he eats 1,880 calories per day. Whoop, whoop, red flag, red flag, 1,880 calories per day. He decided to cut in February. He was at 25% body fat and skinny fat. And uh, he was 177 kilograms, now he's 68 and a half. My lift stalled and I started to get colds and my dick wouldn't get hard. So I panicked and upped my calories and took a week off from the gym from last weekend up to 2,300 to 2,500. I monitored my weight and remained the same this week. Now, should I continue cutting until I get abs and jump back to 1,880 calories or should I switch to a lean bug? Look. 1,880 calories, Ray-Ban, is way too low. The reason why you couldn't get erections is because that's far too few calories. That's an aggressive cut. <clears throat> Look, when guys try to do a cut and see their abs, and you mentioned seeing your abs, losing weight is one thing. 
Okay, losing weight is one thing. Trying to see your abs, losing weight for health is one thing. Okay, trying to see your abs before you know how to build muscle, before you build an appreciable, appreciable amount of muscle mass is just going to leave you skinny fat again. You need to learn how to build muscle mass if you want to look good and cut down and see abs. You can try to cut down right now, but all you're going to do is lose muscle and fat and you're going to end up 150, 145 pounds, 140 pounds, and you're going to look awful. You're going to look awful. Now, 1,880 calories, way, way too low for a younger guy, somebody under 30 years old. That's way too few calories. You don't cut like that. You need to do a lean, clean bulk, um, about 300 to 500 calories above maintenance for two years. Build some muscle mass and then try a cut and then try a cut. You could build muscle for six to eight months and once you have spent a, a period of time building muscle, you could jump on a cut from four to six weeks just to pull back some of that fat you might not be happy with on your body. But you don't, you don't, when you're on a lean, clean bulk, you don't jump from like 27, 2900 calories a day down to 1800. That's not how you cut. When you are running at a bulk or at maintenance, if you want to ease into a cut, you slowly dial down calories to 300 a day or to 300, you drop it by two to 300 for a couple weeks and you see how the scale is treating you. And if you're not losing weight at a comfortable pace, one and a half, two pounds a week, then you dial it down two to 300 more. You don't go from 3,000 calories one day down to oop, 1,880 calories the next day. That's a good way to bleep up your metabolism, bleep up your cut, <clears throat> and really lose a lot of muscle mass. Don't take huge jumps when bulking to, um, when going from a bulk to a cut. Don't take huge jumps when going from a cut to a bulk. You slowly, slowly make changes. So Ray-Ban, I hope that helped. I think you should spend a couple years doing a lean bulk. If you want to cut, you shouldn't be at 1,880 calories. It's going to end up getting you. It's going to end up getting you thin, but skinny fat, and you'll look awful, and you won't be satisfied. So the answer is always muscle mass. All right. Next question is from N. Coatney. N. Coatney said, "Big hairy ugly dude. As I'm progressing in weight with dumbbell presses, um, in both bench and overhead dumbbell presses." I'm finding that my forearms are giving out before my muscles, um, chest and shoulders. Is this a sign that I need to incorporate some forearm work and should I be concerned? Generally, most guys, <coughs> excuse me, let me get some coffee here. I got a hair in my throat or something. I can't be good. Most guys don't need forearm work, typically. But if you are seeing issues with your forearms, um, your grip being an issue on dumbbell bench press and seated dumbbell overhead press and you notice your grip giving out, yeah, I would definitely do forearm work. That's a huge sign. If your forearm work is limiting your chest and shoulder work or your bicep or tricep training, your grip strength is limiting those, uh, your ability to work on those exercises, definitely use forearm work. Now, what I would recommend I really like the wrist roller. You can just, if you don't have one at the gym, you can, you can make one really easily at home and you can just do it a couple sets a night or whatever. A wrist roller is just a long wooden uh, spindle or whatever with a rope around the middle. You don't have to drill a hole in the middle. You could just wrap it around, tie a knot. But basically, you hang a rope or a chain or whatever and you hang weight at the end and you just roll it, roll it, roll it till the weight comes all the way up and then you roll it back down till the weight comes back down. This will help you with grip strength. You don't extend, you just kind of, you know, do it out in front of your body in a good leverage position. Um, but this will help you with grip strength and with forearm strength as well and build some forearm mass. That's one of my favorite choices. If you can't do that, then you could, um, I mean, you could do some pinch grips some pinches where you pinch two plates together and hold them at your side, down here at your side. Make, make sure they're, you're not gonna drop them on your feet or anything like that. Or 
you could put a barbell in your squat rack and you could just, this is no straps involved, lift it up and do a hold as long as possible for 60 seconds. Do two to three sets of static barbell holds for about 60 seconds and when you're able to do that for 60 seconds then add five pounds. So you can do static barbell holds, wrist rollers, pinch plates, all kinds of good stuff. So I hope that helped. Um, next question is from Disco 180. Disco 180 says, I'm a 45 year old male who used to work out early in life, 15 on up to about 30. So he's 45 now and he worked out from age 15 to age 30. I made great gains, always looked like a lineman in the NFL. 5'9", 240, he benched 290, squat 300. I haven't worked out since I turned 30 and 15 years later I want to get back in the gym. Good for you, Disco. I hope you get back in the gym and I hope you stick with it. Never too late. Nowadays I live a low carb lifestyle, stay around 175 pounds skinny fat. I purchased your massive six ebook. For those of you who don't have it, you can find the link below. And wondered, should I start with a beginner program or should I just skip to a later section? Um, or should I not even use massive six? Look, here's the thing for you guys that are experienced lifters. Um, I would probably, you're going to need a break in period. <clears throat> when you've come back to the gym and you've lifted previously and you have a good amount of experience, it's just been a while since you lifted. Spend four weeks as a break in. Don't go into the gym and just kill yourself. Get used, just do a couple exercises per set. Don't push things. Just get the muscles moving again. You know, get the joints moving again. Don't kill yourself. Don't go in to do high volume, anything ridiculous. Um, develop the habit of getting back to the gym. Spend four weeks just moving, doing a couple sets per exercise, just to develop that habit to work on your form, to get back in that groove, to get a good feel for the form again, to get a good feel for what your body is capable of now, 10, 5, 10, 15 years later. And once you're at that point, then after about a month, I want you to start going a little bit more aggressive, pushing for progression, not killing yourself with volume. But if you're coming back, I would probably recommend doing an upper-lower type of split. An upper-lower is a good place to start. It's a good middle ground because you're doing like four or five exercises per day. So it's only like 15 sets max. Um, you're going to be pushing these sets. You're going to be working hard on these sets but you're not going to be living in a gym. A full body, you might have seven, eight exercises. It can be kind of taxing, especially for the seasoned lifter or someone who's been at the gym, you know, previously. So I would do an upper lower. And there's an, uh, you know, Disco, or excuse me, um, yeah, Disco, if uh, you... You can uh, hit me up with email, um, steve.shaw at tigerfitness.com. I'd be happy to send you my book, Massive Iron, for free. There's plenty of upper lower splits in that book. So I hope that helped, Disco. I would get back. I would take four weeks and ease into things and then do an upper lower for about eight weeks. After that, whatever you want, whatever you want. But after those eight weeks, you should be back in the groove again and you can start attacking the gym just like you did when you were a younger man. So... Hope that helped. Frank, next question is from Frank. Let me get some coffee here. Black coffee. No sugar, no cream, just straight black. That's how the big hair ugly dude does it. All right, Frank says, hey, big hair ugly dude. My question is, if I wanted to work out twice a day, what kind of program would you recommend? It would be afternoon, two-ish, then eight-ish. I want to spend an hour each session. By the way, love your videos and info. Thank you, Frank. A double split is controversial. Some of you who um, hear this question might be like, oh my goodness, you should never do a double split unless you're juicing. It's just useless. Look, sometimes in life, you just want to do something crazy and fun. The big hairy ugly dude's done a double splits before. And look, it isn't the end of the world. You don't have to be juicing to try them. Sometimes it's just fun to step out and climb a mountain, kids. So yeah, if you want to try a double split and you have the time in, in life to try a double split, do it. 
I would probably do like a five day double split. So you have two days completely off from the gym. When you're doing a double split, you want to do the heavy compound exercises early, early, early in your first workout. And then your later workout, usually more of isolation. So if you're doing chest and triceps on a day, you want to do your chest work in your earlier session and then your tricep work. Um, excuse me, my thing here wants to go. Uh, my battery's going dead. My battery's going dead. Tell me my battery's going dead. You want to do your... Uh, big muscle groups first and like your chest and then come back and do your triceps your your smaller muscle groups later so you want to do like chest and then triceps and then back and then biceps and then on leg day you might do uh, quads and then come back and do hamstrings or shoulders and then come back and do traps or stuff like that so that's basically how you would do it um i i like to break things up into like chest back shoulders quads and hamstrings to be honest so that's the five day split i would use um, if you're going to do two days i would do like chest back quads and then rest day and then like shoulder and hamstrings and then a rest day so you do like chest and triceps back and biceps um, quads and calves and abs or whatever and then shoulders and traps and then, uh, what did I forget, hamstrings, and then maybe uh, uh, calves and abs again. So something like that. Something like that. That would be five days a week, 10 workouts per week, and that would be a good double split. Do your uh, compounds, your major muscle groups first in the day, and then later in the day come back and do isolation. So I hope that helped. Next question is from Roscoe DC 88 See, thank you for all your help. My question this time is about cramps. Well, um... When he was a fat kid, he said his cramps went away. Now that he's getting lean again, they came back. Do you have any idea why these cramps went away when he had a dad bod, but came back when he got lean? So, he is, um, Roscoe is saying, when he was a tubby, when he was had a dad bod, when he was skinny fat, he wasn't getting cramps. And now that he's lean, he's getting cramps, and he's wondering what the heck is going on. Cramps can come from a number of things. Hydration, and it doesn't sound like that's the case. Sometimes you can get cramps when you're overweight and have like fatty liver, you're not getting all the minerals into your system, but the reverse is happening for you. You got leaner and you're getting cramps. So I would say uh, there's a good chance that you're not getting in enough minerals. You're not getting in enough minerals into your daily diet you know, like sodium and magnesium and potassium and that sort of thing. So you really need to take a strong look at your diet first and foremost and say, ask yourself if you're getting in en enough quality, uh, mineral dense foods, because if you're not getting in enough minerals, that could lead to cramping. That could, that would be the first thing I would look at. Um, once you nail down your diet, make sure you're getting in enough minerals each day. You might even want to take a quality don't a uh, multivitamin don't take one of these from Walgreens or Walmart because half of them are complete crap maybe even 90% of them are complete crap and don't contain what they say they contain or one of them might have a dosage of zinc up here in one tablet and the next tablet might have it down here very inconsistent I wouldn't trust it I'd go with a very reputable multivitamin mineral from a bodybuilding type supplement company so I would probably do that and I would really take a long look at your diet. And if after a month you're still getting cramps, um, then it's time to take a look at, at, at it being something else. Um, just make sure your water intake is high. Make sure you're not under eating sodium, potassium, magnesium, that sort of thing. So I hope that helped. Two more questions. Next question is from Windjammer. Windjammer says, hey, big, hairy, ugly dude, that's me. I was wondering about warming up. Can you give me a method to warm up? that can be applied to multiple lifts or give me some information uh, for warming up on certain lifts like squats. Yeah, here I, I have a warm-up protocol that I use that I, I, I answered this question for Windjammer over at the Tiger Fitness Forum on my Q&A. You can find that below. But here's the thing. I usually do a 10, 5, 3, 1 and then work up in singles. Um, 
using my triple, I go again, I do 10, 5, 3, using my 3 is at about 50% of my one rep max. So on bench press, I'll start out with like the bar, two sets of 10 with the bar, and then I'll do 135 for like five reps, and then I'll do 225 for about three reps. So that's about 50% of my one rep max for three. So you, you, you can do like um, 30, 40, 50% of your one rep max, you know, like 30 for 10 reps, 40 for five, 50 for three, something around that ballpark. It doesn't really matter if you're, you're dead nuts with those percentages. That's just a ballpark range. So I'll do a 10, five, and three. But the three, the three is at about 50, about 50, maybe about 55% of your one rep max. No need to do percentages and get super precise. So the two sets before that, the 10 and the five are lighter, substantially lighter. We're, we're, we don't want to overtax the body with volume. We're trying to warm up our CNS, get the blood flowing. So your three rep set is at about 50% of your one rep max. So from there, from there to your first working set, you want to take 10% jumps. Now every 10% jump you take from there um, to get to your first working set should only be for a single. So I, my max rep is about on bench is about 405. My triple on bench is 225 by three. So 10% of 405 is what? 40 pounds. So I might I do 225, maybe 265, maybe 305, 345. All those are for singles. So every 10% you work up from that triple um, is going to be for a single until you hit that first working set. So I hope that helped. You can apply that to any lift, 10, 5, 3, and then once you get to that three rep set for 50%, every 10%, your 60% is going to be for a single, your 70% is going to be for a single, and then you can move on to your working sets and hammer out reps. So I hope that helped. One more question. Let me get some coffee and let me do a quick bicep shot. Mm. All right. One more question from Mr. Sir Hunt. Ooh, everything went dark. He says, I have two questions. As a novice lifter, I know I will see an increase in size before any, before any virtual physical change occurs. As that being said, I've read that it can take anywhere from 8 to 20 weeks before predominantly neuromuscular gains become predominantly physical gains. So the first question is, what in your experience has been the primary determining factor in how long it takes for a person's rapid neuromuscular gains to slow down from, and his size gains to rev up? So look, somewhere out there, Mr. Sirhant has read that it takes up to five months for you to make physical size gains when you're lifting weights. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. You have to be an extreme outlier for it to take five months of lifting for you to start seeing physical changes in your size. When you first start lifting, when you first start lifting, a lot of the strength gains you're going to see are neuromuscular. A lot of the strength gains you're going to see are neuromuscular. That means it's your, um, your central nervous system adapting to what you're doing and allowing you, becoming more efficient at communicating with your muscles to allow you to see strength increases. And from there, more of your strength becomes muscular. Now, just because you are see, just because a lot of your strength increases are neuromuscular earlier on doesn't mean the muscles aren't working and growing. They are. They're just they're it's just that as your neuromuscular system becomes more efficient at communicating, it allows your body to recruit more muscle fibers work harder and be more efficient at the muscle building process. So just because you are seeing neuromuscular strength increases, maybe your first month or two months or whatever, that doesn't mean you're not experiencing muscle gains. Now he went on to say that, is it possible for someone during their first five months um, to basically pack on size? Absolutely. It's, I don't know where you get this information from, um, or who's saying what, but it doesn't take you three, four, five months to start seeing size increases. Look, 
I've trained tons and tons and tons of folks. The first guy I trained was way back in college in 1986. He weighed like a buck 30. And I put him on a proper meal plan and I put him on a plan of attack. He gained like 10 pounds in three months and he put on a good quality amount of muscle size. And that's the average from what I've seen. If you are not building muscle during your first five months, something is dramatically wrong with your eating plan and or your training. Don't worry about neuromuscular this and maximal muscle recruitment that. Don't worry about the overthinking. After I was in the gym for five or six months, and this is a true story, my gym mentor came to me one day in the corner of the gym. He said, hey, big, hairy, ugly dude. Hey, big, hairy, ugly dude. You taking steroids? That's what my mentor said. He was a college English professor. He came to me after five, six months in the gym and thought I was taking steroids. Now, you might say, hey, I'm a, you know, a, a, a easy gainer, whatever. I had small bones. I was skinny fat. I attacked progression. I ate with a quality meal plan, and I gained mass. You cannot worry about, you cannot worry about neuromuscular this and that and that and that, all that kind of stuff. Get in there, get a good meal plan and attack the weight. Um, it's not going to be neuromuscular for the first five months. If you're not building muscle during the first five months, something is dramatically wrong. Something is dramatically wrong. It is your nutrition plan. It is your training or both. Not only from my personal experience in training, folks, but from my personal experience doing hundreds and hundreds of transformation stories um, at Muscle and Strength and now at TigerFitness.com, from editing these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transformation excuse me, stories, there's one common thing. The folks spun their wheels, spun their wheels until they got their training on track and their diet on track. And once both those locked in and synced in, they started to make rapid gains. And most of these transformations took like a year to 18 months where the bulk of their muscle mass was put on. It didn't take like three, four years. So these people were making quality gains out of the gate, out of the gate, out of the gate. Now, if you're going to go on strong lifts and you're going to put like just a bar on your back and do three by 10 and then put five pounds on the next week and do whatever, three by five or whatever the heck he does, and you're going to take like a, a year to actually test yourself and strength wise, then yeah, you probably won't see gains. You need to get on a program like I teach um, in one of my books, which you can find a link below, where you're maximizing every set that is essential during your first 12 to 18 to 24 months of training. You're making every set count. When you maximize every set, you maximize every workout. When you maximize every workout, you maximize your progress. You back that with good quality eating plan. You're going to make all kinds of gains. You're going to be big. You're going to be strong. The end. That's the bottom line. Now, after about that 18 to 24 month period, you can start to change up your training a little bit. You don't have to push every set to the limit, but that is how you make rapid progress out of the game. Don't worry about all that neuromuscular, this, that, and the other thing. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, hit up my Q&A link below. Post your questions in that Q&A link. I answer every question posted. And if you, yes, you have made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Those are legit 19-inch arms. Legit. And I will be 47 soon. A lot of people say they have 19 inches. The big, hairy, ugly dude does.